Uh, my name is Horal Kasimi. I'm president and director of Sharjah Art Foundation. I established the foundation in 2009, but took over the biennial in 2002. Uh, the biennial has been running since 1993, but our programs increased and developed, and we realized that there was more than just the biennial. Not that the biennial is small, but there was more that, the, um, that we were doing as an institution. So it was important to create this uh, umbrella, which is Sharjah Art Foundation. So the relationship between the Sarja Art Foundation and Cadiz is based on an affinity, an affinity of position in the art world and towards the artists that we work with, a position towards support, supporting those artists, artists that take risk and that are critical and propose critical and also new ways of looking at the present and at the world, but also through presenting and working with artists and other cultural practitioners through our programs. The Sarja Biennial is the primary example, but also the March meetings, as well as, in our case, our exhibitions, residencies, forms of co-production, and so forth. When I think of Sharjah Art Foundation or a biennial in general, and this is how I continue to work, I always put myself back into the position of somebody visiting the biennial, like as a child when I visited. What does the, exp the experience of the individual, and at the same time, the experience of the artist? What's interesting about Cadiz is it's also putting artists at the forefront, you know, with all the, fel the, the fellowships and uh, the space that you have here and the support that Cadiz has given artists even early in their careers and taking risks when those artists don't really have the support structures. Civic poetry was a concept that was really important and really central in discussions during the 70s. Figures such as Pierpaolo Pasolini, but also Kateb Yassin and others really understood and practiced the role as poets in an engaged way, as an organic intellectual that is not detached from the context and the times and the urgencies that traverse them, continuously inventing and proposing new forms of engagement through their practice. This is a concept that has lost traction today. But nevertheless, we found that many of the artists that we've been following and working with, such as Pushra Khalili and her work on Pierpaolo Pasolini, but also Rogené or Mancia de Awara, have been actually paying special attention to these figures to relaunch a renewed thinking as well as engagement with the world of today. Years after, Edward Said would remember the first time he saw Jean Genet. Spring of 1970, a rally at Columbia. He remembers him standing unruffled in an immaculate modesty. An immaculate modesty which allowed him to perform immaculate anger. The point of departure of shaping this exhibition together with Hur al Hasimi was to continue some of the threads that she had put into place during the 15th edition of the Sarja Biennial, namely working with Bushra Khalili and Mansia Diawara, as well as, for example, Hajra Wahid, which was also present with her installation Ham during the edition of the Biennial and is also part of the collection of the Sarja Art Foundation. When I work with artists, I work long, long term. You know, these are relationships that last. And I learn a lot from all of these people. I mean, I've been lucky to work with such amazing individuals uh, who are also presented you know, in the exhibition here at Cadiz. Like Bushra Khalili's practice is so inspiring. Uh, we've been working together since 2011. 
uh, for the biennial in uh, Sharjah Biennial uh, 10. We've collaborated on a few projects, including the, the new commission for the biennial, The Circle, and we're working on a solo show also next year in uh, 2024 in Sharjah. Um, another artist is, and filmmaker is Mansha Diawara, and he mentioned to me that he had this discussion with Angela Davis, they've known each other for a long time, um, about doing a film about her that was uh, a different type of film that is usually made about her. She's always been portrayed in a certain way and she really liked the way he filmed uh, Glissant with this conversation, it was very natural. So I think it's important that somebody who knows someone so well can bring forth what that person believes. Um, you don't feel like Angela's a stranger when she's in that, in that film because of the way she approaches the mancha and us as viewers. Um, of course, uh, Angela um, has been important uh, with civil rights movements. Uh, so I think it was really important to have a voice like Angela's that is historically very important, but still relevant today. So Helen is uh, an artist that I met in New York. Um, I was interested in this film, She Did the Call. Um, which was a beautiful film of um, all the women that were related to the, uh, civil, the men who were known for the civil rights movements, like Frederick Douglass, uh, like James Baldwin's sister. And so there were all these women that were behind these men that were known. It was very moving, the scene. So I really wanted to show the film. And I kept going back to her studio in, uh, in New York when I was there. And she was working on these uh, quilts. I wasn't planning on showing anything more than the video, but the quilts were amazing. She's done a lot of works around uh, women and women power and black women in general. Um, she's also performed in the past with uh, Maria Magdalena Campos Pons, who's an artist also in the Biennial in Sharjah. So I know that she has interest in performance and performativity as well. So the performance which you'll see in the video here, the call was filmed in Sharjah. And it's really about amplifying, you know, black women's voices uh, and everything that is happening in the United States. In connection to that, we discussed practices, works and artists that are present in the Cadiz collection that also contribute to rethinking the practice of civic poetry. No guilt! No guilt! No guilt! Despite the pressures of the manufactured world! That's the case of David Vognarovic and Marion Semama, but also Cecilia Vicuña with her series of uh, Palabra Arma or Ginus Tajizade. We also invited artist Victor Santamarina to develop the furniture of the exhibition, which is thought as a sculptural group of tables that are delving into the transformation of text into matter, taking or departing from the brilliance of graphite and connecting that to aluminum and metal, as well as to the work with wood. This exhibition is not only proposed as a traditional exhibition, but is also thought as a place of resources where people can come to see a long feature film, to listen to a podcast or an, and a long audio film, or to spend some time with the bibliography and other accompanying resources that we've put together. There's also a screening room where daily um, a program of films or video pieces is going to be shown.